Hi, and welcome to Car Stuff. <laughs> when we were at the Dream Car Exhibit at the High Museum of Art, we saw a group of nearly 20 cars representing eight decades of car design, from the 1930s to the start of the 21st century. And nearly all of the vehicles on display were streamlined in appearance, and that's with good reason. It was around the late 1920s and early 1930s when the study of aerodynamics, especially the idea of streamlining, began to really gain popularity among automotive designers. Yeah, that's right. And there was already a hunger for faster cars, but that wasn't enough. They wanted their designs to look fast, too. See, scale model wind tunnel testing for early aircraft began at the close of the 19th century, and drag coefficients of geometric shapes have been tested and measured in enclosed wind tunnels since 1871. Even the Wright brothers, Orville and Wilbur, used a simple scale model wind tunnel to study the effects of airflow while developing the Wright Flyer in 1901. It took them two more years, but they were able to use what they learned in the wind tunnel to successfully get their design off the ground in 1903. And by the 1920s, automotive designers and engineers realized that an aerodynamic shape could be beneficial to automobile bodies too. And it was around this time when a few streamlined designs began to actually make it into production. And the vehicles on display at the High Museum were from the 1930s and later. So let's just take a look at a few examples of some of the wind tunnel tested dream car designs that were there. First up, we have the 1934 Edsel Ford Model 40 Special Speedster. The Speedster was designed by Ford Motor Company's silent chief, Bob Gregory, specifically for Edsel Ford, who at the time was the president of Ford Motor Company and the son of Ford Motor Company founder, Henry Ford. Now this was a radical design because most of the cars of the 1930s were boxy compared to the sleek lines of Edsel's dream car. And as you might have guessed, a scale model of the Speedster was tested in a small wind tunnel and the bodywork was not only streamlined, but it was also lightweight and very strong similar to the aircraft of the same era. And now we've got the 1941 Chrysler Thunderbolt, which we did an episode on earlier. This car was revealed to the public at the 1940 New York Auto Show, and Chrysler touted it as the car of the future. It was specifically built to educate the public about aerodynamics and streamlining. Now, the Thunderbolt was promoted as having been tested in a wind tunnel like the Speedster, right? And this was to provide scientific studies of how the car's shape dealt with continuous airflow and how that information led to refinements that minimize resistance. That's right. Now up next was the 1955 Chrysler Streamline X, also known as Gilda. Now this car was Ben's favorite car at the entire exhibit, so oh, yeah. he's a fan of this one. The Ghia built Chrysler Streamline X debuted at the 1955 Turin Automobile Show, where it was hailed as shaped by the wind, and it caused a sensation with its experimental body. And as you can clearly see, the Streamline X design was heavily influenced by jet aircraft and rocketry in the post-war era. And now we've got a double header, the 1970 Lancia Stratos HF0 and the Ferrari 512S Modulo. At the time, automobile designers and makers were engaged in this ongoing battle to produce the ultimate wedge-shaped car. Well, Scott, as we can see, both of these cars have a radically low stance. That's just 33 inches tall for the Lancia, 37 inches for the Ferrari. And while these two wedge-shaped Italian cars may cut through the wind with ease, they were both so low, and the driver visibility was so poor, if you could see the windshield there, the outlandish designs never made it to production. And that's just a few examples of what we saw at the exhibit. Now, yes, the designs are radically different across the various manufacturers and spanning the decades, but they all have one thing in common. They were all trying to cheat the wind. Now, it might be easy to design a car body that appears to be aerodynamic. However, to really fine tune that design, to know that you're getting the most out of it and to make it truly, you know, slippery, you have to test it in a wind tunnel, just like automakers have been doing for the past what, 90 years. Now, here's an interesting side note, Ben. Enzo Ferrari, known for stuffing powerful V12 engines into his early sports cars, once said, aerodynamics are for people who can't build engines. Right, and that's funny because uh, Ferrari recently spent over a thousand hours in the wind tunnel with a one-third scale model to perfect the aerodynamics of its California model. For a brief time, the California was the most aerodynamic Ferrari ever made. That is, until the F12 Berlinetta GT was revealed at the Geneva Motor Show in 2012. Aha, uh -huh. now let us know what you think about aerodynamics aerodynamics and automotive streamlining in the comments section below. And be sure to subscribe so that you can keep up with the latest car stuff. Can we keep the karate chop I did at the beginning? No, of course we can. Awesome. Only we need to get something there for you to actually hack in half. Um, we'll fix it in post, right?